Do you suspect someone narcissistic is spying on you? It's time to take control. Start with managing what you share publicly. The digital age has made it easier than ever for people to share, and unfortunately, overshare. This is where narcissists can take advantage. They can glean a lot from your online presence, so it's crucial to review your privacy settings on social media platforms. Make sure you restrict who can see your posts and avoid sharing overly personal information. But the online world isn't the only place where you need to be cautious. If you live with the narcissist, be mindful of what you say or do in shared spaces. Remember, walls have ears, and you never know who might be listening. Your privacy is your right, and it's time to reclaim it. Remember, control what you can, starting with what you share publicly. Next, let's turn to your phone and devices. These are treasure troves of information for prying eyes. Your phone, your tablet, your laptop, these are essentially digital extensions of yourself. They hold your photos, your messages, your browsing history, and so much more. So, how can we ensure they're not an open book for a narcissist? Let's start with the basics. Passwords and pins. These should be strong and unique, something that's not easily guessed. If your device offers it, consider using two-factor authentication. This extra layer of security can make it much more difficult for anyone to access your data. Then there's physical security. It's all well and good having a password that's as strong as a fortress, but if you leave your phone unattended, it's like leaving the castle gate wide open. Always keep your devices within your sight or securely stored away. Secure your devices and guard them like the personal vaults they are. What about communication? Is there a safer way to go about it? Indeed, there is. When dealing with someone you suspect of spying, it might be beneficial to limit direct communication. Instead of phone calls, consider using text messages or emails. These methods provide a record of your interactions, which could prove invaluable. But be aware, these too can be intercepted. For highly sensitive communications, you might want to explore secure messaging apps. These platforms typically offer end-to-end -end encryption, meaning only you and the recipient can read what's sent. There are plenty of options out there, so it's worth doing a little research or consulting with privacy experts to find the best fit for your needs. In essence, the goal is to limit the potential for your words to be twisted or used against you. Choose your communication channels wisely, and remember, sometimes less is more. Now, let's talk about being evasive and non-committal. It's not about lying, it's about protecting your privacy. When dealing with someone who may be prying into your personal life, it's often wise to minimize the details you share. This doesn't mean you're being dishonest, rather you're exercising discretion about what information you choose to reveal. For instance, if you're asked about your plans for the weekend, you can keep it vague, perhaps say you're catching up on some rest or exploring a new hobby. You don't need to elaborate or provide more specifics than necessary. There's also the tactic of misdirection, used with caution. This involves sprinkling in some vague or misleading information to throw off the inquirer. But remember, the goal isn't to create a web of lies, but rather to maintain a level of privacy. It's a delicate balance, and you don't want to end up looking secretive or dishonest. Remember, you don't owe anyone an explanation for your life. Sometimes, controlling the narrative can be your best defense. It's about how you present your need for privacy and boundaries. To do this, you don't need to outright accuse someone of spying. You see, it's all about framing. Instead of saying, I think you're spying on me, you could say, I value my privacy, and I need space to breathe. This way, you're not starting a confrontation. You're simply stating your needs, which is a completely reasonable thing to do. And remember, it's okay to be firm. This is your life, your story. You have the right to decide who gets to see which chapters. It's not about keeping secrets. It's about respecting personal boundaries. So let them know where the line is drawn. In the end, it's all about taking control of your narrative. You are the protagonist of your life, not them. Take control of your story and set your boundaries. If you can, and if it's safe, document everything. This is a crucial step in protecting your privacy when dealing with someone potentially narcissistic. Keeping a record of suspicious activities can serve as concrete evidence, 
and could potentially prove to be an invaluable resource down the line. Think about it this way. If you find yourself in a situation where you need to demonstrate the narcissist's intrusive behavior, having documented proof can tip the scales in your favor. This could include screenshots of suspicious messages, records of unusual phone calls, or even a journal of incidents that made you feel uncomfortable. However, it's essential to strike a balance. Prioritize your safety over gathering evidence. If documenting something puts you at risk, it's better to step back and reassess. Remember, the ultimate goal is to protect yourself and your privacy. Evidence can be your ally, but remember, safety comes first. Decoys can be a useful tool if used with caution. Now let's delve into the art of misinformation, which can be quite a useful tactic in our toolbox against narcissistic spying. The idea here is to plant false yet harmless information to see if it gets back to you. If it does, it might provide you with clues about their methods of snooping. For instance, you might casually mention a fictitious weekend trip plan in a conversation, or leave a decoy note in a place you suspect they've been prying. If this information somehow finds its way back to you, it could reveal the channels they're using to spy. But remember, this tactic should be used with utmost caution. The goal is not to create a web of lies, but to protect your privacy. Any misinformation should be insignificant and not harmful. Decoys can be a useful tool, but use them wisely to avoid unnecessary tension. Focusing on self-reliance can be an effective way to limit information access. You see, the less we rely on a narcissistic person for favors, assistance, or even simple information, the fewer opportunities they have to gather data about us. It's about creating a buffer, a space where our lives are not visible to prying eyes. Think of it this way. Every interaction, every favor, every piece of advice we seek gives them another glimpse into our lives, our vulnerabilities, our habits. By minimizing these interactions, we're essentially closing the curtains, denying them the view they so crave. This doesn't mean becoming a hermit or cutting off all contact. Rather, it's about finding other sources of support, other people to talk to, other ways to get things done. It's about diversifying our sources of help and input, making ourselves less predictable and hence less easy to monitor. Remember, independence is power. You don't have to face this alone strengthen your support system. In the face of uncertain and uncomfortable situations, having a strong support system can be a lifeline. It can offer emotional grounding and provide valuable advice. This support system can be composed of reliable friends, family members, or even a professional therapist. Confiding in these trusted individuals about your situation can help you navigate your way through the complex maze of dealing with a narcissist. They can provide you with a different perspective that you may not have considered and can help you cope with the emotional strain. Remember, it's not a sign of weakness to seek help. On the contrary, it's a testament to your strength and resilience. You're taking active steps to protect your privacy and mental well-being. So, reach out to those you trust and let them stand with you. Your support system is your fortress. Don't neglect it. Above all, Prioritize your safety. In situations where you feel unsafe or if things begin to escalate, it's crucial to put your physical and emotional well-being first. This may mean setting boundaries, a concept often overlooked but incredibly vital in maintaining personal space and autonomy. Boundaries can be physical, keeping a safe distance away, or emotional, limiting the amount of energy and time you invest in the person. If setting boundaries isn't enough, consider distancing yourself from the person. This could mean reducing the amount of time you spend with them, or cutting off communication entirely. It's a tough decision to make, but sometimes it's the best choice for your safety and peace of mind. Finally, never hesitate to seek professional help if necessary. This could be legal advice or therapeutic support. Remember, there's no shame in reaching out and asking for help when you need it. Your safety is paramount. Do what you need to protect yourself.